Please take a moment to pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. In this problem, we can see that the electric field in the y and z directions is zero, but in the x direction, we do have an electric field. It is a variable electric field. It depends on the value of x. So as the x coordinate of our location increases, then the strength of the electric field would also increase. We've tried to show that by drawing variable length vectors, showing that as we move to the right across the screen, in other words, as your x coordinate increases, then the electric field magnitude also increases. Now our job is to calculate the potential difference between points B and A. And our strategy is actually going to be to move from A to a new point. We've called this point C. We've placed it at the origin. What we're going to do is first calculate the potential change as we move from point A to point C. And then we're going to calculate the potential change as we move from point C to point B. Now we are permitted to do this because th the electric force is a conservative force and that means that when you find the potential difference between two points it doesn't really matter the path that you travel. It would sort of be like if you wanted to calculate the change in gravitational potential energy as you rode your bicycle up a hill. All that matters is your initial height and your final height. The path by which you get there doesn't. So it's kind of that idea we can follow a more indirect route. We can go from A to C, then C to B, and then add those potential changes together, and that'll give us the potential difference between points A and B. Now, how do we actually calculate the potential difference between two points? Well, we can use the following integration, and to exemplify this, why don't we do the first calculation. We're going to calculate the potential difference between points A and C. Our final point in that case would be point C. So we're gonna write V sub C minus V sub A. And then on this side, we're going to fill in the initial and final coordinates. Now, we're initially at point A, so that has a coordinate of 3. And then we're finally at point C, so that has a coordinate of 0. And then we look at the electric field. Now, here's where things get interesting. The electric field is based on the x-coordinate. We can go back and look at the equation right here. You can see that the electric field is based on x. Well, ask yourself, what is the x-coordinate as we move from A to C? Well, the x-coordinate along that line from A to C is zero. So when it comes time to the electric field, we would have four newtons per coulomb and then times the x-coordinate of zero. And what's interesting here is that that eliminates the entire right-hand side. This entire integral becomes zero. This shows us that the potential difference between points A and C is actually zero volts. So that calculation is done. Now all we need to do is go from point C to point B. So we're finding the potential difference between those two points. We would write V sub B minus V sub C. This is going to equal the negative and then the integral. And then we have our initial point. Remember, we're going from C to B now. So the initial is zero and the final is four. Now we have our electric field expression that was four newtons per coulomb times X. And then we're moving in the x direction. So we're going to actually, instead of saying ds, we're going to say dx. Now we have this little dot product here. We're going to talk about that momentarily, but let's clear some room. Now in a dot product, you can actually rewrite the dot product by taking the electric field magnitude, which is the 4 newtons per coulomb times x, multiplied by dx, and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. Now let's not forget, as we're moving from C to B, the electric field is pointing in this direction. Also, as we move from point C to B, our displacement vectors, which we call dx, since we're moving in the x direction, also point to the right. And you can see that the angle between those two vectors is zero. The cosine of zero is one, so we can actually eliminate that cosine term from our equation. And now this becomes a relatively easy integral. We have four newtons per coulomb as a constant, so we can actually factor that to the outside. And then we have this relatively mundane integral of x dx. So we all know from calculus that we can add 1 to the exponent to make it into an x squared and then divide by that new exponent, which is 2. And look at that. We can actually reduce this. This becomes 2 newtons per coulomb. And then we are evaluating this integral on the bounds from 0 to 4. Now we plug in the upper bound first. We get 4 squared, which is going to be 16 and then we plug in the lower bound zero, but that's just gonna be zero and we end up subtracting them according to 
the lovely rules of calculus, and we end up with negative 32. Now the unit here, we gotta be careful. It's not Newtons per coulomb. This is a potential difference between two points, so it does work out to be volts. So now let's take stock of what we have. We said that the potential difference when we went from A to C was zero, and then we just figured out the potential difference from B to C, or rather from C to B, excuse me, was negative 32. So what's the overall change in potential? Remember, we're trying to find VB minus VA. We claim that the path didn't matter. Well, let's sort of justify that now with these scalar quantities. We can show that VB minus VA equals VC minus VA. I kind of wrote that clumsily over there. That should have a V on it. And then plus VB minus VC. Now study that carefully. You can see the VC minus VC cancels. And lo and behold, on the right-hand side, you have negative VA plus VB, but that's the same thing as VB minus VA. So that kind of checks out. That shows that what we did was correct. And therefore, we can come in here and actually plug the values in. So VB, excuse me, VC minus VA, let me clean this up a little bit, we said was zero, and that was volts. And then VB minus VC was the negative 32 volts. Our final answer is negative 32 volts. That is the potential difference between points A and B.